Welcome, everyone, to another episode of How to Make Money in Stocks with Investors Business Daily. Now, each month, we put out a list of new buys by the top performing stock funds. So today, we're going to take a look at some of the names on that list. We're also going to talk about support and resistance, which is something mm -hmm. that every investor should learn how to do. But first, let's take a look at the market. You know, the market shifted a little bit on Friday. We had the Brit mm -hmm. exit worries hanging over the market. We also added a distribution day. We had one on the NASDAQ. So that brings the total to three on the NASDAQ, and we have five on the S&P. Now, some of the distribution days have fallen off due to time. Right. So oil also hit $50 this week on Nigerian supply fears, but then it, it retreated pretty sharply as well. That's right. Now, it was actually a decent week, really, until Friday, and then... The S&P had been holding above that 2100 mark, which we talked about on last week's show as being a point of resistance over the last few months, but it fell below that mark on Friday. The NASDAQ hasn't been able to reclaim that 5,000 benchmark, and it fell even further below it on Friday, losing about 1.3%. Now, a few stocks reported some strong earnings numbers this week. One was Dave and Buster's. This is the sports bar. It saw earnings rise 57 percent, and it popped 15 percent for the week. Not nice. bad. Nice. Especially when you have that kind of sell-off on Friday. Yes, it, it held up extremely well. You're right. Smuckers, of course, Peanut Butter and Jelly Maker that made a nice move following their quarterly report. And, of course, they own Pet Food, which really adds to their bottom line. All right. Now, despite Friday's sell-off, if you look at the IBD50 stocks, they basically held their own. There weren't any big, heavy volume sell-offs on that list, and we still have several stocks that are setting up. One is CDK Global, which provides IT and digital marketing solutions for auto dealers. And I actually covered this in the IBD stock analysis this week. It tried to clear a 57.99 buy point, then closed below it. But it's one to keep an eye on if the market uptrend holds. And we continue with earnings. A few notable names that are due to report next week include Kroger's, Smith & Wesson, and FedEx, even though you know, some of these are not looking as strong as That's what right. you would like. Yeah, only one or two, I think, really with a 90 or higher base. composite as yeah. well. Now, one breakout, among others, that you want to keep an eye on is Broadcom. We mentioned its big move last week, but it gave back some of those gains this week. And it's pulled back to just above the buy point. So you want to see if it finds support at that level or if it heads lower in the coming days. Now, Tesla came under selling pressure on reports of Model S suspension safety issues, but the company denied those allegations, and they also came down pretty hard on the blogger who right. wrote the story. Mm -hmm. Now, while Tesla skidded this week, as we noted, the IBD 50 stocks generally held up well while the indexes slip. So next week, we want to see which way they sync up. Yeah, we, Either we, the names are going to pull up the indexes or the indexes may potentially pull down the stocks. Yeah, so keep your eye on this possible Brit exit. It is something that's definitely going to affect the market one way or the other, as well as any statements by the Fed. Each month, we put out a list of new buys by top-performing stock funds over the last three months. So you see what they have been buying. And it's really a great resource to see not only which stocks they've been buying, but which sectors they're Absolutely. moving money into. That's right. That's right. So the name of this list is called New Buys of Top-Performing Stock Funds for the Past Three Months. So this is a dandy list. As Matt said, you know, it really paints a really clear picture of what, where the big money is going. And it really helps you see the big movements in the industry groups and in the sectors. That's definitely something you want to track. Now, here's the most recent list, and you can download this, by the way, on our site, investors.com slash investing show. For each stock on the list, you're going to see the industry group, the number of funds that bought shares over the last three months, and then the total investment. And in this particular list, you can see that there are a lot of building sector stocks. So that shows that sector has been in favor. There's actually nine building-related stocks making the list this time, including U.S. concrete, installed building products, and universal forest products. Now, U.S. Concrete formed a cup with handle base, which became a first stage base because it undercut the prior structure. Now, in the bottom of the base, it got a huge spike in volume. It was 223%. The volume was up for the week. It rose six weeks in a row, took a little tiny little breather for mm -hmm. one week, and it rose another six weeks in a row before forming its current consolidation. Note that U.S. Concrete was also on the list of new buys by top funds last month as well. Other names that also made the list in both May and in June were Universal Forest Products, Ollie Bargains Outlet, 
Blue Buffalo Pet Products, and Ulta Beauty. So you want to check this list each time that it comes out at the beginning of the month. Now, Ulta formed kind of an ir irregularly shaped consolidation. It was a little funky looking thing, but right. it zoomed up 13% the week of March the 11th on volume that increased 121%. This was due to spectacular earnings. Now, it held tight for four weeks, moved up slightly, and then it held tight for another five weeks before bouncing off the 10 week line. Again, on a strong earnings report, mm -hmm. and it rose 11% on volume that was higher by 51%. Five Below is another stock that made the list of new buys by top funds both in May and in June. It cleared a double bottom buy point in March, but struggled to gain traction and then fell back below the entry. But this discount retailer is now back above the buy point. And look at the big volume spike since Five Below started building the right side of that pattern. That tells you that there's some strong demand among fund managers. And we're talking about this because, of course, it's always a good idea to see which stocks the top fund managers are buying Absolutely. and which sectors they're putting money into. Oh, yes, indeed. So up next, we will talk about a couple stocks from the list. We'll go through that, and we'll talk more about support and resistance. One of the keys to understanding stock charts is to understand that concept of support and, and resistance. resistance. It's key to very many parts of that art. Now, let's take a look at two examples of stocks from the most recent list of new buys by top performing funds, and those are Mueller Water Products and Ollie's Bargain Outlet. Now, Mueller Water had an area of resistance to get through starting February the 6th, 2015, and then again May the 20th, 2015, and May 27th. Mm -hmm. When a stock bumps its head against those price areas, you think about it as a ceiling, and it right, just can't get right. through it, it can't move any higher, that's what we call resistance. And you can see that here. You want to see a stock break through that ceiling of resistance and then turn it into a floor of support. Mueller did that recently, finding support right around that price, which was also right around the 10-week moving average line. And that's how stocks form these stepping stones as they climb higher during a run. Now, Ollie's Bargain Outlet is a newer IPO that's another good example of support and resistance. The current consolidation, or the potential new base, came down just to the previous base's buy point. It found support right at that level. Another point related to this concept of support and resistance comes around the 10-week moving average line. Ollie's has hit resistance there recently, so you want to see if it can get back above that benchmark and then turn it into an area of support as it works on this new base. Now, sometimes this is helpful. If you're holding a stock for much bigger gains in a raging bull market, you know, when a stock finds support above a prior base structure that is very, very positive, very healthy, this is stuff we talk about in the Level 4 workshops here, and it's very typical of how all of the major winners from the past act. And support and resistance also comes into play when you're determining bases and buy points. So if Ollie's holds on and finishes this consolidation, the buy point would be 10 cents above this former area of resistance. Now, if the stock falls below this prior low, then comes back to form, let's say, a double bottom, the entry would be 10 cents above this point of resistance. And by the way, we always add 10 cents just to make sure that the stock is actually punching through that resistance and not bumping its head and falling back and down. And falling back, absolutely. So if you look at the major winners from the past, you're going to see that this scenario plays out over and All over again. Time. Yeah, It's really good to study stocks from the past because this idea of support and resistance is something that you really should learn as an investor. Right. Now, to learn more about chart reading, go to the How to Invest tab on Investors.com. And you can also check out books from Amy and me, and we'll have links to all of that at Investors.com slash Investing Show. I will be in the great and the beautiful city of Boston next week, so be sure to come out and see me. I'm doing a swing trader workshop as well as a leaderboard. 
All right, and you can get all the details on that at investors.com slash investing show. And while you're there, you can download that list of the new buys by the top performing stock funds. All right, see you next week, everybody.